so today's expert session is based on the IPR and uh, sir will explain more depth on this session. So uh, let me introduce our uh, uh, particular experts. Uh, today's expert name is Amit Patel sir. Uh, he is managing director at IP it is a firm that is a fastest growing IP law firm and uh, he is very uh, good at advising uh, all the academic institute universities also the industry associated with the startup and also there are many entrepreneurs right who are willing to start their business and uh, he also uh, try to communicate with more innovative ideas and business strategy and also he exploring the technology based international business opportunity and uh, he is good at uh, kind of pattern research analysis and technology transfer licensing and uh, commercialization so uh, his expertise is uh, much in a depth of uh, you can say on ip acts so uh, my request to amit sir to present uh, today's session without uh, going through uh, much depth because uh, i think so uh, his presentation speaks more than my words. Uh, sir, it is over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, you are available today for all of us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for a kind introduction and a kind invitation. Right, I am very thankful to all of you for uh, inviting me with all of, uh, inviting me and interacting with all the students with respect to different aspect of IPR, patenting. Right, and uh, uh, today is uh, also a very important topic. Don'ts to get a patent. Right, these are the common mistakes which usually in uh, our industry or our academia, because of the lack of awareness, what are what kind of the major mistakes we are making, which makes our inventions not patentable. So please confirm whether my slide is visible to all. My slide is visible to all. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thanks for the confirmation. So friends, uh, this is I think we are the we are on the second session with respect to this series on the IPR talks. So in the first session, we'll discuss about the what is fundamentally IPR is, what are its type, what is the IP system in India, right, and why it is required. So today's during today's class, we are going to discuss what it is towards the patent, and with respect to patentability criteria, what are not inventions, and what is if you have a patentable invention, what you should not do to get a patent, right? And with respect to some important statistics with respect to a patenting system in India. So this would be today's uh, coverage points. So before we proceed, I had just a brief introduction and a brief overview of the IPR and what we discussed in the last session. Intellectual property, it is fundamentally protecting the creations of the human mind whatever would be your creations that can be suitably protected by all these types of IP instruments, patent, trademark, copyright, design, integrated circuit designs, geographical indication, and the trade secret. So fundamentally, the important aspect or the important takeaway from this slide is, this protects the creations of the human mind. And now, based on the type of the creation, it can be protected by one and more type of these IP instruments. Now, this is the one slide which in the one slide which compiles the information for the criteria for the type of IPR, what are their criteria, what is their maximum time limit, what is the renewal period and which act and rules governs them into the India. <clears throat> So for the patent, the patentability criteria involves three criteria, novelty, non-obviousness, and usefulness. So what are these criteria? How to uh, filter through your invention from them? We will discuss in next slides. 
but for getting a patent, just criteria is there. Once a patent is granted, the patent has a validity of 20 years from the date of filing, which requires a renewal on every yearly basis. And the Patent Act and the rules, right, which are these Patent Act 1970 and the present rules, this governs the system of the patent in India. For the trademark, the important criteria is it should be for the distinguished goods and services. It can be a word, logo, combination of word, numbers, device, and all that. It can give you a protection of a lifelong. Till the time if, if you keep if you keep on renewing it, trademark has an initial validity of 10 years. And after every 10 years, if you keep on renewing it, it would remain with yourself for a lifelong time period. Uh, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, 200 years, or till the time if you keep if you keep that renew, it is governed by the trademark act 1999 design so design protects the novel ornamental and aesthetic appearance of an article this is its criteria it has a maximum protection period of 15 years 10 years on the first grant and it can be further extended for next five years it is governed by the design act and the respective rules copyright protection so this is for what kind of invention can be protected as a copyright the criteria is it is to be original and the creative. It's time protection for copyright. Copyright is entire life of the creator plus 60 years after his death. So if any person creates something at the age of 20 years and suppose he lives for 70 years, 80 years, 90 years. So the copyright validity for his work would be entire life of the creator plus 60 years beyond his death. Renewal, this requires no renewal. And this is governed by the Copyright Act 1957, right? Geographical indication. So geographical indication, the criteria is distinguished product characteristic due to geographical or meant power from the special region, right? This also has a validity of lifelong with a condition of renewal at every 10 years time period. It is also, this is governed by the Geographical Indication Goods and Registration Act, Registration and Protection Act. So each type of IPR is governed by the special act and rules defined by the government. Each has a defined protection time period, right? And what would be their criteria? Out of all these type of IPR, copyright is the one, one type of IPR which gives you the international protection. You file into India, but it gives you international protection. Otherwise, all other are such type of IPR wherein you file into India, you also require to have a, a protection into other countries of your interest. Say, for example, if you have created something, applied for patent of that product into India, and you are interested to have the same, same kind of patent protection into 10 other countries. So you must require to file a patent into those countries. Similar is the situation for trademark, design and geographical indication as well. Copyright gives you the international protection on the okay. Now, so when, whenever you have created something, whenever uh, and you wish to have it protected by a patent trademark copyright design, and when you satisfy and go to defined procedure under this act and rules, pay the required fee as per mentioned under them, submit all the required document mentioned under them. You overcome all the objections defined by the examiners, right? And at the end, government gives you certificate like this. Trademark certificate, patent design, copyright certificate. And this gives you the exclusive right. You are the owner for said IP. 
right? And based on this, you can say others like that you are the owner, others cannot copy it. Now, coming focus towards our today's today's topic, patent. So patent is a type of IPR. It is not all fundamentally the IPR itself. It is a type of IPR, intellectual property right. It is a type of intellectual property right. Now, what is the de definition and fundamental of patent? So this is, these two lines defines the patent and you can say this is the fundamental of patent. So what is that? <clears throat> So, patent is the exclusive right granted by government to an inventor. Exclusive right means only to the applicant, only to the applicant and excluding all others. These are granted by the government. No professional, no, go, no private agency, no academic institution, right, can give you these rights for the patentability aspect. And these are being granted to the applicant and the now, once you have a patent, so exclusive, what kind of exclusive right is being given for the manufacturing, use, distribution, and sell an invention for a limited period of time. So patent has a validity of 20 years, right? So exclusive right granted by government to an inventor for manufacturing, use, distribution, and sell an invention for a period of 20 years. This is, you can say, a definition of patent or a fundamental of the patent. Now, say for example, say for example, you are the owner patent or five patent. What exactly that means? If you are the owner for one patent or five patent, what exactly that means? It means that patent protection means that invention cannot commercially made, used, distributed, or sold by any person without the patent owner's consent. Right? You have the applicant has the exclusive right for making, using, distribution, and selling. Only you have these rights for manufacturing, usage, distribution, and the selling. No other person can do any of these things without the patent owner concern. So if you have a patent, it means you have an exclusive deal. For what kind of inventions a patent can be granted, right? So patent can be granted for Majorly two type of inventions, a product invention or a process invention. Okay. So anything and everything in the world, right? Anything and everything in the world can either be a product or a process only. Nothing, nothing in the world can be either of two. In dono ke lama kuch or possible nahi ho sakta, right? So any kind of invention with respect to existing product or process, very, very small inventions, upgradations, those can be patented at the same time. A brand new product, brand new process development, that can also, also be a patent, okay? So fundamental takeaway over here is, patent can be granted for a product and process invention. Brand new, so definitely you can patent it. But at the same time, important aspect, really important aspect for our industries and our, our academic player is that are really small changes, really small changes into existing product and process. Right? Those are also eligible for getting patented. Whether that change is really, really very small or whether that change is significantly very improved version, right? In both the aspect, those changes can be protected by means of IPR, patents. Now, look, criteria for the patentability. Criteria for the patentability. Agar aapko kis ke liye patent karwana hai, what should be that criteria? 
वो इन्वेंशन वो प्रोडक्ट वो प्रोसेस में ऐसी क्या क्वालिटीज होनी चाहिए जिसके बेस पर आप बोल सकते हो इट्स अ पेटेंटेबल सब्जेक्ट मैटर सो फॉर एनी इन्वेंशन टू बी पेटेंटेड देर आर जस्ट एंड जस्ट थ्री क्राइटेरिया एंड दिस अप्लाइज टू ऑल द इन्वेंशन फ्रॉम ऑल द इंडस्ट्री डोमेन्स ओके so this means that whether your invention is related to agriculture pharmaceuticals chemicals textiles or household items or you can say a rocket science items or a computer related inventions or any technical field of any industry domains okay for all of them the patentability criteria is just and just these three criteria okay so for any invention or from any domain if your invention is passing through just these three criteria your invention is a patentable subject matter there are no different standard for different industries all industry all invention are to be judged based on these three factors only and the inventions which are passing through them they are said to be as a patentable subject matters okay so just three criteria what are they and how they are to be evaluated so the first criteria is the novelty novelty innovativeness so the first thing into the invention whatever you have developed a very small invention a significantly improved or even a rocket science the first criteria into the invention is to be checked is the novelty and novelty is to be checked on a world wide basis although agar aap india mein patent ke liye apply karoge aapko patent rights sirf aur sirf indian continental ke hi milenge indian country ke if you to pay have a patent into same product into 10 other countries you required to go and apply there but वेन एवर अगर आपने कुछ बनाया और उसके लिए आपको इंडियन पेटर्न चाहिए तो आपको फर्स्ट क्राइटेरिया है नोवेडी इट मीन्स दैट वॉट एवर यू हैव डेवलप फॉर विच यू नीड अ पेटर्न प्रोटेक्शन दैट शुड बी जस्ट दैट इज टू बी नोवेड ऑन अ वर्ल्ड वाइड बेसिस नॉट ओनली द इंडियन कॉन्टेक्सट राइट नोवेडी वो जो आपने बनाया वो पूरे वर्ल्ड के लिए नया होना चाहिए सो से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन योर रिलेटिव स्टेज इन टू द यूएस एंड वाइल अ वीडियो कॉल यू कम टू नो दैट दे आर यूजिंग वन प्रोडक्ट विच इज रियली गुड वन एंड यू नो दैट सिमिलर प्रोडक्ट इज नॉट अवेलेबल इन टू इंडियन मार्केट सो नाउ यू आर कमिंग अप विथ आइडिया दैट टू बिल्ड दैट प्रोडक्ट to indian market and to sell for the entire indian market so you can do it but you cannot have a patent protection on that product right because on the day when you apply for a patent it is new for india but certainly a similar product is available into other part of the world and compared to the that product or features of your product are exactly like the same in which makes your product no more novel so it is no more novel not patentable right so so novelty is to be checked on a world wide basis and the thumb rule for the novelty whether invention is novel or not the thumb rule to check this is all the features of the invention all the features of the invention should not be present in a single piece of existing product or a existing piece of paper all the features of the product for which you need a patent protection all the features must not be present in a single product or a single paper single paper means a research paper of 50 30 page single patent document single thesis like that so say for example your feature your product has a 15 features 
and let's say there are three different products. One has a five feature, another has a five, another has a five. But you are coming up with a combination product for the first time. Combination product for the first time. So no other product has a 15 feature, a single product or a single document. All three are different. Okay. So compared to those different component or a different component and a combined product, your product is a novel. Okay. Say for example, your product has a your say for example, this is one product, water bottle. And say for example, this is the product. And now compared to this, I am making a red color water bottle. Similar design, similar dimensions, similar operations for the same purpose. I'm changing the color of this product to a red. So compared to this product. Red bottle would be regarded as a novel if it is not manufactured on the present, right? Because there is a just one feature differentiation of the color. The size same, dimension same, feature same, use same, all is the exactly one and same. The difference is the color. And compared to this blue, that is a red, and that's why it is said as a novel. So just based on one feature, well, you can say your product is novel or not. Thumb rule says that all the features of your product must not be present in a single piece of product or a, or a piece of paper. And that can be a dimensional, that can be a, uh, you can say a color differentiation, feature differentiation or anything. Say, for example, this bottle has a height of 15 inch. I am manufacturing a extrapolated version of a 20, 20 inch or a larger version, one liter bottle to two liter bottle. So compared to this, that new version would be a novel. Mind it. That new feature would be a novel. This is first criteria. Second is a non-obvious names. This is really important for patenting. Very, very important for patenting, right? Non-obviousness. So break it, non-obvious. So second, second criteria is non-obviousness. And obvious means very common, which is very understandable and very kind of common sense to a general person, general industry professional, or a person who are working into those domains. Obviousness. Now, if I'm making from blue color bottle to a red color, blue bottle to a red bottle, or one liter bottle to a two liter bottle or a five liter bottle of the same dimension. So that makes it a obvious matter. Koi bhi bottle ka color change kar dena, Similar product ka dimension change karke uska capacity increase karna. Those are regarded as the obvious matter. And if it is obvious, it is not patentable. So second criteria is a non-obvious names. Whatever you have created, it, that should be non-obvious to a person who are working into the same field. Right? It should clearly reflect the involvement of your human mind which makes this invention very uncommon for others so say for example this is a water bottle for opening and closing there are a number of ways right this is screw type opener and closer there is a press and lock opener and closer there are a bottles with a you can say keep hot and keep cold right there are bottles, say for example, for opening and closing of this bottle, this fellow has created this, this notch, okay? Whereby you can place your finger and you can easily open it, right? There are water bottles who have think of to create well, well one small notch over here so that you can place your finger and you can easily open it. So these are the kind of really small, 
but a non-obviousness method. Okay, non-obvious methods. So second and important criteria is non-obviousness. You have to prove that out of entire product, right? Out of entire product, what is that one feature which you have developed using your intellect? And for applying for a patent, getting a patent, having that one feature is also good enough to go for patenting. We doesn't require to develop a brand new product, brand new process, and only then to go for patenting. With respect to like this, any existing product in your domain or in any domain, if you observe any problem and if you come up with a one new idea to make that product innovative, more better, right? And with respect to that one feature, just that feature with respect to just these three criteria, whether agar aap aisa kuch banaoge, whether that thing would be a novel or not, worldwide basis, it's a similar available like in novelty aspect. Second is a non-obvious, whether agar aap aisa kuch banaoge, so, ऐसी कोई सोच ऐसा कुछ बनाना बाकी सब के लिए भी कॉमन है यस और नो इफ इट इज यस इट्स अ ऑबवियस एंड दैट मेक्स अ नॉन पेटेंटेबल एंड इफ द आंसर इज नो ऐसा सोच ऐसा सॉल्यूशन आपने कुछ इनोवेटिवली डिफाइन किया है दैट मेक्स दैट अ नॉन ऑबवियस मैटर नॉन ऑबवियस राइट सो सेकंड क्राइटेरिया इज आल्सो पास एंड थर्ड इज रियली वेरी रिलैक्स्ड वन यूजफुल and you have to say that whether that thing is really useful to any person any individual or whether that is useful to any part of society or what accordingly whether it is novel non obvious and useful so any invention or any part of that invention if they satisfy to these three criteria you can say that you have a patentable subject matter and this applies to all the inventions of all the technical domains of all the industries a unique unified standard requirement for patentability of all the inventions now government so these are the standard requirements for the patentability these are standard requirements and at the same time under the patent act indian patent act government has also given a standard with respect to non patentable inventions you see there are government has defined what can not be patented although these are the things which satisfy the novelty non obviousness useful criteria but government has given a standard exclusions this will not be patented right if your invention falls under any of these items they are not patentable subject matters and what are they so first is free will us and against natural law if you are proposing like against the natural law which challenges the gravitational forces which which challenges the say for example life and death principles okay which defines a uh, a growth growth of the uh, microbes or a living organism or human being right so anything which is against the natural law right they are not patentable subject matters second is discovery of the scientific principle or abstract theory scientific principle like newton's principle einstein equation darwin's principle okay or abstract theory for a, you can say a mathematical formula or a pythagoras principle right so these are they are already available in the nature but you are the one who have first time derived it so those are discovery of scientific principles and the abstract theory they are also not patentable subject matter discovery of living and non living thing okay which are freely available in the nature so any available metal 
if you derive a new metal, which is no far reported by anyone else, if you derive a new plant from the forest of the Amazon or the Himalayas, right? And if you say that this is the new plant, which is no far available or no far reported by anyone else, right? So they are freely available in the nature. You derive them or you find out them. So they are also not patentable subject matter. Natural plant, animal, in whole or any part thereof. So the new plant, new animal, new or any part of that animal, right? Or leather or teeth or a bones or a, uh, you can say a pancreas or a liver or tissues or any enzymes, right? Any secretion product from the plant, animal or the microorganism. So which are freely available, natural plant, animal or any part of them as such they are also not patentable. Any inventions which are against the public moral values or which are harmful to the environment or other living organism. If you have created, uh, say for example, a virus like a corona, so which is novel, wo virus banana is also non-obvious in China or if you are using that virus against the morality, humanity, Right? So even though they are novel, non-obvious, useful, but which are against the public moral, which are harmful to the environment, which are harmful to the living organism, they are also not patentable subject matter. A new form and property of the non-substance. Right? So new form and property of a non-substance. Say, for example, azithromycin. In the COVID, right? COVID treatment, usually doctors are prescribing vitamin C, zinc, azithromycin, or you can say aspirin to a greater extent. So they are already available drug. But if you are saying that the use of azithromycin into corona treatment as well, that is a new use. So new form or new property of a non-substance, right? with respect to mechanical items, polymers, or uh, new available metals or drugs or anywhere. They are not patentable subject matter. Mathematical and business method. So if you are deriving a new mathematical formula, if you are coming up with a new business method, like uh, e-market, Ola, Uber, Swiggy, Zomato, or a new social media, new advertising campaign. So they are also mathematical and business, mathematical formula or business method. And they are also not patentable subject matter. Method of agriculture and horticulture. So new method of agriculture, horticulture, they are also not patentable subject matter. Mental games. So how Virat Kohli is playing his game. How Viswanath Anand is playing his game. How Roger Federer is playing his game. Okay. Or you can say uh, also how doctor is doing the surgery. Right. So they are mental games and they are also not patentable subject matter. Compound admixture with a new, no new property. Okay. Compound admixture. So, say for example, there are five drugs which are which you are giving as a separate tablet or capsule. But now you are coming up with a idea that I will merge all of them into a one single tablet. One single tablet. But if that is not with a new property or improved efficiency, improved efficiency then those would not be regarded as a, as, as a patentable subject matter. So when you are doing a um, mixture, compound admixture, it should be enhanced improvement with respect to efficacy or a reduced side effect or improved viability or something technical improvement, which they are individually not doing. But as a joint, they are giving a improved results. 
then they are patentable. If they are just a result of mixing them, one plus one is equal to just two, they are not patentable. If, but if one plus one is equal to more than two, they are patentable subject matter. Presentation of information, then a literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work. They come under the copyright protection, but they are not the patentable subject matters. For engineering related inventions, okay, this is really important. Arrangement and rearrangement, duplication of non devices. So, if in your system there are 10 components, they are arranged in one particular flow. But you, if you are coming up like a, I want to place this on a, this position, this over here. So, those arrangement and rearrangement of non devices, they are also not patentable. Unless and until you prove that that arrangement and rearrangement gives you an improved quality, reduced reduction, improved efficiency, or enhanced result, or improved percentage yield, or percent, or or in fact, or reduced manufacturing cost. If those are the technical improvements, those can be patented. But just a, just a arrangement and rearrangement with no of these improvements. They are also not patentable subject matter. So these are the standard exclusions what government has given, right? Which are not patentable subject matter. Now, what would be the benefit if you go for a patenting? So there are number of benefits, right? As an inventor, as a society, as an industry, as a government, or as a researcher, there are number of benefits for filing a patent for your own or having the information for others. If others are filing, that is also useful to yourself. So what are they? So the benefits of patenting. The, so these are few of them. Beyond that as well, there are a number of benefits for an IT system or filing a patent. They are, first of all, patent, they are the important source of scientific and technical literature because the first criteria novelty and because of this criteria if you are creating something and if you need a exclusivity you require to file the patent first then anything else aap uska product bana ke market mein baad mein launch karoge uska research paper baad mein launch karna hai if you go and give the government submission records those would also be literal parts. So they are the important source of scientific and technical information. They are the treasure house of scientific invention. So if you want to search what is already available, what is already reported, you can go and search the patents. This will also help you for the duplication of the research work, reinventing the wheels, right? with respect to a problem solution or with respect to a new R&D. If you are effectively utilizing the patent search and information, this can be a great scientific technical literature treasure of information and can be greatly useful for avoiding the duplication. They pave the way for further discoveries, right? If you are thoroughly analyzing in particular field, what is going on, what others are filing, what new approaches are coming up, then while learning those aspects, you can also define your strategy, right? How I can plan my research so as to come up with a new product, which is also patentable, right? So for that purpose as well, patenting is useful. Stop reinventing the wheel. Right, identifies the emerging technology, emerging areas, and define useful for identifying the white areas and gray areas for doing research for doing business. So there are a number of benefits. Now, important aspect: don't to get a patent. So we understand that for getting a patent, just three criteria 
or to be fulfilled. Novelty, non-obviousness and usefulness. But the important don'ts to get a pattern. Agar koi chiz aapne banai a very used, very small or even a very incremental invention. Right? Koi bhi existing product ya process mein aapne sirf ek chota sa bhi update kiya hai. Right? Which makes that product very useful, very competitive, very and that's also an important aspect of that product or process. And if that satisfies those three criteria, and now if you are making your mindset to apply for a patent, right? You know that it is a patentable, and if you wish to apply for a patent, don't to get a patent. Aapko patent chahiye, to aapko kya nahi karna? And these are the things which kills the novelty, novelty of your invention. Novelty of the invention. And these are the biggest mistakes what our industry and what our academias are doing. Right? And which makes even a good project a non-patentable subject matter. So these are the things which broadly affects novelty of your invention and these are the novelty killers. Novelty killer. So, what not to do? <clears throat> Don't to get a patent. Stay away from below listed items before you file a patent application. Stay away from listed items before you file a patent application. First is a publication. Publication in any manner. Publication by means of research paper, publishing an article or blog on the internet, giving a newspaper disclosure of your invention, it's working, or what you have developed, then a poster presentation into a conference, seminar, workshop. So before filing a patent, if you are doing any of these things, right? If you are doing any of these things, that will kill the novelty of your invention. Although that is yours, research paper is yours, and you yourself are going to file a patent. But if you file first a research paper and then a patent, so on the filing of a patent, on that day, the same information is available on the research paper. The same information is available in the form of research paper and compared to that, your patent is no more novel. No more novel. No novelty, no patent. Right? So before filing a patent, stay away from publication by any of these means. Stay away from taking part into any award competitions like event, workshop, seminar, conferences, poster presentation, wherein you are going to take part and you are going to discuss what is your invention, what you have developed, what is the problem it is going to address, how it is working. So before filing a patent, if you are doing any of this, that will also kill the novelty. And that will make the patent non-patentable subject matter. Stay away from any kind of public display of your invention by means of taking part into the fair, public places, giving a demonstration to the uh, trade shows or behind the giving mar marketing or demonstration of your product and uploading the video via any of these social media, YouTube, Facebook, website, social media. So before filing a patent, if you are doing any of this, that will also kill the novelty. And once the novelty is gone, patentability is also gone. Public working with respect to a production and marketing. <clears throat> so if you have developed one product and you know that that is solving a really good problem, and if that solution, right? If you start a product, well, and if you are selling that product, right, and uh, society and industry needs uh, that solution, and you are the one who have developed it, so definitely you are going to sell at a higher price. But when the competitor comes to know that product, 
they will reverse engineer it and they will sell it with a reduced price into the same market. Right? And in those situations, you cannot take any action because you do not have any patent protection or IP protection in that on that particular idea, that particular product or that particular invention. So as a startup as well, as an industry as well, if you have developed a new product, new feature into existing product, and if you are not doing patenting by means of production and marketing of those products, that will also kill the royalty. And that's why others can copy it and you can take no action against them. So if you need a patent protection on your very small or a moderate or even a very good invention in all the scenarios, right? You must require to protect the novelty of your invention. Novelty of your invention. And how you can protect your novelty? So unless and until your patent application is filed, stay away from any of these things. The day when you file the patent application officially, say for example, I filed the patent application on this moment, on this right moment, from the next moment only I can do any of this. You doesn't require to wait till its publication or till its grant. From the next moment itself, you can do any of these things. And because you have officially recorded your priority. On this particular day, on this particular time, I officially filed patent application. And now you can do any of these things. They will not kill novelty because your application is already filed, already filed, reserved with a date and timestamp. Okay, so stay away from all these things. And these are the biggest mistakes, friends what our academia and our industry are making. Now, in usually, in terms of academia, it is normally observed that if student or faculty are doing a good work, it is normally observed that our colleagues or our guides or our faculty, they are motivating students to go and file for the research paper than a patent filing. So if there is a situation that if you have an invention on your hand, right, in your hand, and now you have a two way, either a file a research paper for that invention or file a patent, what would be the differentiation between these two? So for the same research, if you file a research paper first, and if you file a research, patent first, what would be the difference? So if you file a research paper, so research paper gives you no ownership. No ownership. Wherein for the same project, if you file first the patent application, patent will give you the ownership right. Ownership right. Okay, that would be yours. When you go for Instead, research paper gives you no ownership. Instead, when you go for research paper publication, publishers are taking away your copyright rights as well. So while submitting the research paper, they are giving you the copyright transfer form, wherein you are giving a disclosure that I am giving the my copyright to the publisher. So no ownership and at the same time taking away your copyrights. So that is the scenario with research paper. Whereas in case of patent, ownership remains of the applicant and inventor only. Right? Right. For research paper publication, there is a no novelty criteria. Novelty is not the must. Suppose if you file a research paper on one particular topic into one ABC journal. And suppose if you will approach another journal X, Y, Z. So there are high possibilities that other journal will also take up that research. Right? Whereas in case of patent, because of novelty, even though 
one fellow, even though one fellow has filed a patent, your, the patent system will accept your patent application, but they will not grant your patent because of the novelty criteria. Okay. And suppose based on the research paper or patent filing, if you have created something, you file a research paper, you file a patent. Now, they, suppose there is a scenario, you first file the research paper. So based on that research paper, any other fellow refers it, replicates the product, set up an industry and doing a business. In those scenario, you cannot stop others if they are practicing your invention based on that research paper. But if you have a patent on that invention and if others are practicing it, you can stop others. Because patent gives you the exclusive right for manufacturing, using, distribution and the selling. So no other person can do any of these things without your consent. So these are the two differences for the way either you go for research paper or a patent. What would be advantages and disadvantages? <clears throat> now, okay. So we are, sir. Just let let me know by what time I have to conclude. Yeah, sir. It is up to five p.m. Uh, but uh, yeah, sir, you can go <laughs> through your content, right? It is very interesting. Okay, okay. So yes, there are some slides I will try to cover up as soon as possible, right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Now, look, here is the some important statistics with respect to trend of Indian patent filing. So look, friends, last three years, you can say, Right, 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 19. So in India, total patent filing were nearly 45, 47, 50,000. 50,000 patent filing into India in one year time period. Now, if you further bifurcate or analyze this number by Indians and the foreigners, you will find these important numbers, right? This says out of this 45 to 15, 50,000 patents, Indians are filing and applying for roughly nearly 30% patent only. Raised 70% is being filed by the foreigners. So this is the total number of patents filed by all Indians into one entire year. This includes all the Indian citizens of 1.3 billion people, all the MSME units of nearly 7 crore MSME units, all the government uh, department, government institutions, government, you can say ONGC or a railway ministry or a DRDO or a CSIR laboratory or all the government departments, all the academic institutions all the universities, right? All relatively in one year, we are filing just and just 17,000 patent applications only. These are also not really granted patent. These are just the application. These are filing by the foreigners, right? Into the same time period of one year, China files nearly 15 lakh patents, number one in the entire world. The number two is USA, that USA is filing nearly six lakh patents. The number three and four are the Japan and the Korea. They are equivalent to the size of Gujarat. And they are filing nearly three to four lakh patents in a year. Right? And look at the India contribution, what we are finding. The numbers are really, really very small, right? Really very small. So, and the, the, so this doesn't mean that we are not technology capable enough, we are not intellectual enough,
but the biggest reason responsible for this is lack of IP awareness. Lack of IP awareness because we understand that patent means we know or we assume that patent means uh, for the persons who have a biggest resource, the persons who did a PhD, the persons who always keep on reading, they are only capable enough to do a patent. Right? We do not know the patentability criteria. We assume that a big, big, big innovations can only patent it. A really small invention from any product, any process by any person can also be applied as a patent. Right? So this awareness we require to build. Now look, friends. Further, when we find or we bifurcate these numbers, 13,000, 15,000, 17,000, right? Those would be even interesting number. And just assume that if you divide this number by a cumulatively, 1.3 billion people, 1.3 billion, 17,000 divided by 1.3 billion people, the average would be nearly 1 lakh. So practically this is that out of one lakh Indian citizen, only one fellow is going for a patent. This is hard reality, right? And now further, if you divide this, look at distribution of applications category-wise. <clears throat> Natural person means you apply by your own self or with two, three student or a faculty, those are called as a natural person. If you apply as a startup, startup, right, government approved category. If you apply as a small entity, MSMEs. And if you apply as a other than natural person, legal entity, uh, uh, established corporations, government department, colleges, university, they comes under this category, right? So, out of natural person, look, out of these, we can say 15,000, 17,000 patent into this year, Indian and foreigners. So, out of 1.3 billion people, right, only 7,000 people, only 7,000 people are filing a patent. Right? Government says that nearly 40,000, 40,000 plus startups are registered with the government. Out of them, only and only 800 startups are going for patenting. We have nearly 6.5 to 7 crore MSME units into India. Until today, not more than 1,000 MSME units go for patenting. Look at all the government academic institutions, universities, government laboratory or established big companies. They cumulatively are filing not more than 10,000 patents in a year. These are the hard reality of India. And the biggest reason for this is the lack of IP awareness. Lack of IP awareness. So we have empower we understand that patent doesn't mean it's a rocket science very small small inventions can also be applied for a patent and what other countries are doing right so this will if you apply for this so first of all you would be your own beneficiary this will also going to give advantage to our country as well now look this further miscellaneous information relating to during last 10 years time period of patent information. Look at number of patents granted. 15,000 file, file, number. Right? Number of patent granted and number of patent in force. Patent ka validity 20 year hota. So 2009-10 में पूरा ने साल के पूरा ने 20 years के time period 
और आज की तारीख में क्यूमुलेटिव हो गया कितने पेटेंट फोर्स में है राइट एंड दैट विथ रिस्पेक्ट अगर गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट कितने देखिए पंद्रह हजार के आसपास पेटेंट ग्रांट करता है वो पंद्रह हजार पेटेंट में से इंडियंस क्यूमुलेटिवली नेचुरल स्टार्टअप गवर्नमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बिग कंपनी ऑल क्यूमुलेटिवली इंडियंस को पेटेंट ग्रांट होते हैं और आज की हिस्ट्री में देखिए पूरे लास्ट टेन ईयर रिकॉर्ड इट इज नो मोर देन ट्वेंटी फाइव हंड्रेड जितने पेटेंट इन फोर्स है उसमें से इंडियन को देर वेर ओनली एंड ओनली लेसर देन टेन थाउजेंड पेटेंट आर अवेलेबल टू इंडियन रेस फॉरिनर्स so we must require to understand the importance of ipr we must require to understand the importance of patenting right it is not a rocket science it is not a difficult if you are able to go and publish a research paper you can also go and do a patent filing as well okay so there are misconceptions like it is for the phd holder it is for for ऑब्जर्वेशन स्किल एनी थिंग अराउंड यूर सेल्फ आप कुछ भी चीज देखते हो उसको ऑब्जर्व करते हो if you come up with the idea instead of this if something like this could be happen it would be more better if those would be idea you can work upon it just your idea with respect to novelty non obviousness usefulness and if you assume if your idea is passing through three criteria go and file for the patent There is no restriction with respect to age. Applying for patent, so minimum 14 years, 14 year or 18 years. चाहिए ऐसा कुछ नहीं है. Even a six year old kid can apply for a patent. There is no restriction with respect to a education qualification. Minimum graduation चाहिए तभी patent apply कर सकते हैं. ऐसा भी नहीं है. Illiterate person can also apply for a patent. जिसको खुद से लिखना या स्टडी करना भी नहीं आता है बट दो आर द मैकेनिक्स दो आर द फार्मर्स हु आर सॉल्विंग देयर प्रॉब्लम्स बाय देम सेल्व दे आर आल्सो एलिजिबल टू अप्लाई फॉर पेटेंट राइट सो देर इज नो एज रिस्ट्रिक्शन देर इज नो एजुकेशन रिक्वायरमेंट इवन देर इज नो रिस्ट्रिक्ट देर इज नो रिक्वायरमेंट टू सबमिट आधार कार्ड पान कार्ड और एनी आइडेंटिटी कार्ड राइट so any person if you are a mechanical engineer if you are a computer engineer if you observe anything of agriculture field mechanical field electrical field and if you are working around it if you make it more better and if that solution is patentable you can go for patenting it there is no restriction of field as well right so with this there were some slides remaining but i hope we will cover up them into the next presentation so with this i would like to conclude my presentation over here if any participant has a question they can unmute your mic and you can directly ask uh, you can write a question into the chat box as well or you can always give me a call or write me a email with respect to any of your queries for ipr patent trademark copyright design 
So with this, I would like to conclude myself over here. Any questions? Yeah, so many students uh, have one question only while I'm taking project lab or any kind of thing. Uh, can we pattern uh, software <laughs> because they always have some different idea to solve through the website or mobile application. And I think so uh, uh, more of them are uh, mostly focused on, you can say, uh, more on software side uh, apart from hardware. So uh, can you throw some light on that one, sir? Yes, sir. So look, uh, this is a really important question for the students who are from this field, right? Computer and IT. So as per this, right? Mathematical and business method. Computer and software, they are regarded as the computer programs and government has given that that computer program per se, computer program per se, are not patentable subject matter and computer anything which is just computer program whether that is a mobile application whether that is a website whether that is an algorithm whether that is a software anything which is just computer program how innovative it is that is not patentable subject matter within the purview of indian patent act Government has given an exclusion for that. Now, being a computer and IT professional, if you know this fundamental or if you, when I say this, you will feel or think like that, what is this rubbish, right? Why government has given such a, a bad restriction? How we a computer and IT professional will work around, right? This would be a normal thoughts when you come to know about this, such thoughts will naturally come. But friends, this is a strategic decision and strategic step what government has taken. So suppose the scenario, if government has given, government has included it, right? Government will give a patentability aspect to those, such kind of inventions. Imagine the situation, what this multinational corporation like Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Adobe, Amazon. So they are way ahead advanced than us, right? Being a student, whatever you are thinking, they might have think of uh, probably before one decade. One decade, right? So if government was giving a exclusivity or patentability to those aspects, this big corporation will cover all the aspect of those invention area. Right? And if that would be permitted, look at the size of IT industry or BPO industry contribution into Indian GDP. What is the number of employability these areas are generating into Indian economy? If they are being patentable subject matter, our IT industry or BPO industry wouldn't grow to this size. What we do have, right? If there would be a patentability, we don't have a Infosys, we won't have a TCS, we won't have a Wipro, or we won't have a any other big corporations, right? So these are computer, anything which is just a computer program, they are not patentable subject matter in India, and they are really good for Indian business, Indian industry. So these are my thoughts. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. I think so. Behalf of students, I had asked. Uh, any question from anyone else uh, in a particular uh, this matter? So I am requesting all of you to uh, just ask any question if you have in your mind. So even if anyone is hesitating to ask, the yeah. forum is quite open, but they can always write an email to myself. Yes. So please uh, note down uh, sir's email ID and uh, uh, you can ask him uh, if you have any question regarding to IPR, innovation, startup and entrepreneurship.
Okay, so all of you can on their camera, so we can uh, take one uh, memorable image uh, right with the sir uh, regarding to this uh, session. So I'm requesting all uh, to just on their camera, so we can take a quick snapshot. So I'm requesting all Hemil, uh, Asil, and Deep, Viraj, right? All the students are there. Okay, so thank you everyone uh, for uh, being a part of today's session. And uh, I also like to uh, thanks our experts, uh, expert uh, Amit sir, uh, on behalf of, uh, I think so, Himbal sir, uh, our HOD sir, Darji sir, and our entire institute, all the faculty members, uh, because he's always humble to uh, give reply to my every message. And he's always ready for any expert talk which I requested to him. And uh, he has very depth on uh, this kind of session uh, related to IPR. And uh, always he's sending number of good uh, kind of uh, books and all the particular research area, uh, PDF and all this thing to me. Uh, so uh, it is really great uh, to have him in, uh, between us. And we would like to, when we have offline, right? We would like to have on our campus uh, so for the this kind of session. So we can interact more students because in online, uh, we can get very few students, but uh, we are having a recording. So if any student are interested, they can also go through this thing. And really thanks to you, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. My pleasure too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.